Oh, good morning, Vietnam. Another day, another dollar. Holla. Thursday, June 18th, 8.23. Officially 97 hours fasted. And I gotta tell you, I slept like a baby last night. I got roasted in the sun on the river. And I'm feeling a little sluggish today, that's for sure. It's, it's all catching up. Y'all know what time it is. It's time to weigh in. <laughs> Sign language channel. Here we go. Really hoping for another two down. Moment of truth every day. Two eighteen point four on oh God. Another two down. Perfect. Okay, I had no idea that this is what seventy two hours of fasting was going to do to me. Talk about a game changer. All right, what are we working with today? It looks like it's going to be a beautician and the beast. Oh yeah. Another bluey. Just another bluey for your boy. Oh 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 oh. Welcome to the laboratory. It is time to make a beat. And in order to do that, we gotta put on our beat making goggles. Beat making goggles. Oh man, don't you guys love when you're doing like technological things and they're like time consuming and they like kick your ass and then you like something happens and you're like, it's inexplicable. You're like, why would it, why would it turn out like that? Like, why would that happen? That doesn't make any fucking sense. Oh, never mind. Just needed a refresh. Sometimes you got a power cycle and then it's all good. For any of you wondering, I use Logic Pro X. So that's what I'm pulling up right now. bitch down and see what it see what it sounds like. I'm thinking 70. See what it is that 70. digging the slower vibe the 70 bpm the very chill but it needs more it needs like some vocal chops a little percussion duh, 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 kind of thing and then another weird sound like a like an ambient something or other so i'm gonna search for it i won't make you listen to it i'll just show you when i have it okay i found the ambient thing right here <laughs> I 
need some vocal chops. All right, I got them. All right, and I found my ass some percussion. So that sums that up. No, I know you're like, okay, that's all well and good. That's just a loop. So what I what I do when I make music, I make the whole loop as big as possible where it would be like a chorus or like the, the climax of the song, basically, like the most complex part. And then I take the elements from that. When I arrange, I will just remove parts and make the middle sections more basic and let it breathe and give it more air. And then once I lay the structure out, if those middle parts that need, like that have more air for the verses and stuff, need just a little couple candies in them, like some like small ear candies, some back, backing stuff, I'll go in and find some extra stuff to kind of just put in there, but I don't like to overcomplicate the instrumentation in the verse area. So what I do is build the beat in its full fat entirety, like a big fucking delicious burger, like a Whopper, all the fixins, and then I'll break it down to like a double cheeseburger, and then I might slather a little mayo or dip it in some sauce, like just in the choruses. You know what I mean? We're doing food analogies with music, but it's true. That's how it is. Like deluxe for the ver for the chorus and for big parts, and then like just simple cheeseburgers for like the other parts just vibing i think it's a vibe it has like a very world feel i feel like a very international kind of world feel just out of curiosity though from 70 let's speed it back to up to its original 125. let's go 120. 120 is a very standard dance bpm <laughs> Certainly doesn't sound that good there. That's 110, 110's kinda of cool. What's one, 100 sounds like it'd be probably pretty cool. Uh, <laughs> before we go, um, uh, make your bad bitch. All right, so as you can see, it is a complete and total boiling bluebird again, once again today. Uh, I just wanted to give an update as to the state of my being at 96 hours, but actually at current time, it's 2.30 in the afternoon, so it is. So technically we're at 102 and a half hours of being fasted. And like I said, the hunger, it's not an issue. It's a little bit there, there's minor grumblings nothing making me keel over nothing me making me feel like oh my god i'm gonna die oh my god i gotta eat none of that i feel fine so so i'm on my way to the grocery store right now to pick up the food items that i'm gonna need to make the meal tomorrow so by the time i eat tomorrow it's gonna be midday i'm aiming for 2 or 3 p.m so that by the time i go to bed i'll be going to bed digested and hungry so i can start my next round of fasting now from here after my first refeed i wanted to go crazy on this first fast just to see how long i could push it i could probably push it further but i think 126 hours probably by the time i eat tomorrow is good enough and then i'm going to start doing rolling 72 so rolling 72s is 72 hours of fasting one refeed day 72 hours of fasting one refeed day until i reach my goals basically and somewhere along that way i might throw in a little couple switch ups here and there. I got some tricks in my bag. I'm on my way to the grocery store to get what I need for tomorrow. I'm gonna make a bomb ass, but keto healthy ish meal. And uh, I cannot wait to have my first meal after 126 hours of not eating a morsel of food. I have not, I promise you guys, I have not eaten a morsel of food. Got a mic up to spread this wisdom. Now, 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 I know. I'm not the almighty wisdom. I am no Buddha. I am nothing like that. But 
Um, when I speak on these topics, these are just strictly from my personal subjective experience. And I think I have the ability to articulate them in some sort of a sensical way that kind of can resonate, I guess, to some degree. And uh, yeah, that's just, I, I just by no means do not take me as like this, like expert in a field of just enlightenment or wisdom or anything. It's not that, it's just, I'm speaking from my experience and like my viewpoint on the world and life. So before we get started, we have to do two, we actually have to do three things. First, I gotta ask you, how are you feeling about this all green backyard motif? I got the green lenses, the green shirt, and the 80s dad shorts. Come on now, you know you'd crack a few bush lights, bud lights, go down to Tampa, party on a beach, you know what I mean? Fuck, the 80s, partying in the 80s must have been the best, but I love these like retro pastel colors and I know this is a tacky clash, but guess what? I'm in my backyard and it's warm and it's sunny and nothing else matters other than me chilling and talking to you. But what does matter too is this, is the snake juice, of course. We've seen it every day. I know it gets repetitive. We don't even have our teaspoon here today, but at this point, I just know how much is required. That's the potassium, that's the one pill. And then we got a dash of that good pink Himalayan. I didn't think I could incorporate it into these videos, but I guess I can. Before we do anything more, we must pour. I got her nice and icy in there. You guys know I'm an icy guy. That's what it has to be. And the last thing on the agenda, see, see that tan? Look at that farmer. I got roasted at the river yesterday as you guys saw at the end of the video there. I hope you enjoyed that. It was a pretty cool little vibe, but I gotta get my eyes fixed. Like legitimately, I need to get my eyes fixed though. Like this is a temp, temp fix. I actually hit like two or three of these a day, like per round, you know what I mean? It's, it's terrible. Twig of our snake juice. much needed after a long night's sleep i crashed out like a baby last night at 10 o'clock woke up at 8 today so what's that 10 hours sleep so i got a great sleep between my walk just being fasted and going to the river soaking up the sun i was toast you guys know how like you sit in the sun for x amount of time you just get toast after that at least i do so today's uh real talk topic change when i did the hoodies house change and the channel change i was actually completely floored by how many people were so affected by that change in a negative way, in a negative emotional way. Like who here misses the old intro? This doesn't feel the same. Uh, your old name was perfect. I don't know why you're changing it. Da, 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 all that stuff, right? And I could have never expected that to be the response on such a large scale because I'm the type of person who embraces change. I love change. I think change is one of the most crucial parts of life. I think change is exciting. I think change is motivating. I think change encourages growth. It challenges us to face ourselves and to get creative and to be resourceful and adapt and everything like that. I personally fear stagnation. So in my addressing this topic of change, I guess I just want to impart to you my viewpoint, my perspective on change, my personal experience with change, and also your personal experience with change, because I'm going to hit on a topic that you can't be denied because we're all going through it and um, maybe be able to shift your perspective into how to embrace change and accept change as a good thing, not a bad thing. I know as humans, we are creatures of habit and we do seek comfort right? I understand that. I totally have done it lots in my life. I still do it in my life. We are, we are imperfect beings. Uh, we all like our comforts, right? We started out in our mother's wombs. We got cuddled by our mother and, you know, our family, you know, if, if you had a good family, they had your back and it just these warm, nice, cozy feelings uh, in life. You get used to things and you, and you get comfortable and you just like it just so. But the harsh reality of life is, is that life is in a constant state of flux, ebb and flow, and time is marching forward. And at all angles of life, things are always changing, whether you know it, acknowledge it, 
selected it to change or did not select it to change. Things are always changing. And to have the perception that everything is just so and it's all good and staying the same is to be oblivious and ignorant to the fact that that's just not the truth, right? And so I feel like a lot of times we as humans fall into these false comforts. Uh, that's a huge statement, false comforts. You know, we find these things that we just find this extreme comfort in and, and we have this false idea that it's always going to be that way. It's going to be just, this is my perfect thing forever. But the reality is it's not going to be and everything's changing at all times. Perfect example is look at 2019, 2018 to 2020, right? 2020 has been an absolute change of the world. The entire, the way the world is even working is completely changed. And I know you're going to say, well, but not for the better. It's shaken up my world for the worse. I understand that. I get that. That's part of change. That's part of the ebb and flow of life. Sometimes you're on a high, sometimes you're on a low. But in those lows, like now in 2020, with all the challenges that we're facing, the adversity, so much good shit will probably come of this. Just look at the movement that's happening for equality and race. Boom. People are actually taking action to make something better because something needs to change. A change is occurring, right? Even the way that like systemically like money and things operate after this, who knows what kind of new policies are going to be in place in the world that our perspectives have been shifted. Like, we can't go on in the old system anymore because if we hit a pandemic or something, shit is going to crumble. Like we, nobody can, can be earning money. The, the economy is going to collapse. We can't go our old traditional way. Change forces you to look at things differently, adapt, become resourceful and find new ways, grow, learn, right? So through change, things can actually flourish further and become better so as far as the uh, my own personal experiences with change selected and non-selected my selected change in life was when i was 20 naive as shit comfortable in my little dwellings of life not knowing any different knowing any better i selected to move from a small town of a hundred thousand to canada's metropolis toronto of three million or whatever it is five million talk about a change the craziest change but at first when I got there, sure, it was crazy. It was intense. It felt uncomfortable. I was really down, dark, depressed for a good while. But you know what? As time went on, I got resourceful. I learned how to adapt. I got used to the situation and then I flourished. I developed a social circle. I grew as a boy into more of a man, into learning how to be an adult, how to take care of myself, how to fend for myself how to go about doing a lot of things for myself, procuring a place to live and just learning about all these more adult things. And then also along the way, meeting a tons of people, having so many different relationships, so many different um, just, just experiences, all those things were amazing in that change. So that's a selected change that forced me to grow and learn. So because I went through that extreme growth going to a major city and you know going through all that for 10 years and life unfortunate unselected change which is my next talking point pushed me back into my home city where i'm originally from of 110,000, and it's very chill it's very relaxed not a lot goes down here very blue collar there's not a ton of like nightlife it's just very it's just where people have kids, they raise their family, they get old and they die and they have their peaceful little life. And that is fine with me. I'm cool with that for them. So for me, having gone through that extreme change kind of gave me like a hit of that good shit. Like I'm now in my mind, I'm like, all I want is to be faced with challenges for change. Like I want to see more, do more, travel. I want to challenge myself to create more to 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 find new opportunities to be met with this like next this level up like i'm a, i want to level up like that's in my idea of my life that's what my life's about is about leveling up and like pushing myself to pursue the better higher self of me in the things that i love and to get to that next rung on the ladder like i love that and with every rung on the ladder you're going to be met with this like 
this this change right like let's say somebody was like let's say i get back into cooking seriously right let's say let's say down the line here i'm like i'm all about these cooking videos and i get reached out to by like a network being like we want you to do like a test host for a show let's just let's just say that use that as an example that for me is going to be intimidating and a, and a change but i'm going to have to rise to that occasion and face that adversity in that change and guess what if i defeat that shit and i and i succeed at it then that level is going to feel normal to me again and then i'm going to be like well how long do i stay here do i stay st like you do that for five years and then at the end of that five years you're like okay what's the next rung on the ladder like i love that shit that's what I want my life to be about. I want my life to keep moving and going places. And that is why YouTube to me was such an ultimate awesome idea of like a, a, a way to make money and, and be independent in that because I could change on a dime. I could swivel on a dime, right? I'm free to do what I want. I could change up at any time that I want. My day-to-day -day grind of life, of work, didn't have to be get up, shower drink the coffee get in the car go to the office or go to the job site or whatever say hey to tim and sherry and nolan and then get to the thing that i do every day and then next thing you know 30 years later i wake up and i'm like okay well i did that for 30 years straight and i never deviated off the path i never went anywhere else i just did this constantly for 30 years that to me, to me, if it's, if you like that for you, awesome. I'm happy for you. Some people are happy like that and that's cool. I want you to be happy. But for me, my happiness is found in the switch up. My happiness is found in the freedom to be able to do things that I want, you know, at the drop of a hat, right? To be able to have my day to day not be a cyclical mundane thing, right? I just, I don't want that for myself. That to me, for me, for my soul, for my energy feels like a death sentence, right? I, I've said this before. Now, let's get off that topic and go to change that I didn't select, right? I selected to go to Toronto. I didn't select this change. Life forced this change upon me. And that was when I got sick with that like uh, disease or whatever, virus. And uh, my life was completely forced to change. And now I'm in an entirely different scenario. And here's the thing. So is my life way worse from that change? No. In aspects of my life, it's a little different. It's a little more, I don't know, maybe, it, I don't want to say boring, but you know, it's just, a, it's yeah, it's a little more boring. I, I don't have a city I can walk out into every day, walk around and go see, do cool shit and all the people and it's buzzing and it's happening and there's bars and you know, all that stuff and my social circle. Here, I'm more of a monk mode, chilling, not really social but it's also pandemic season so that's kind of you know playing with that a bit but uh on alternatively it's like reconnecting with family having good family bonds chilling with family doing that so it's like that's the trade-off of that change is like okay now i don't have these like friends and acquaintances and this crazy shit to go do but at the same time i have like this more relaxed taking care of myself a little more a little more peaceful familial bonds coming back and stuff like that other side of it financially i'm so much better off that city was crushing me financially and here now i'm in a way better position both like in terms of like my living situation now my finances everything and here's the real thing is when pandemic season and everything the world gets back to kind of normal because i'm in this situation now i'm actually going to be able to, to to pivot more and do more relative to the things that i've always seen for youtube because of my current situation so it's like it was a blessing in disguise right i was met with this change that i did not select for myself but ultimately it has set me up in a better way right it has it has given me like these other gifts i feel like that's enough to say on this topic and i want to end it with basically this is that don't fear change and also understand change is completely and totally inevitable right time marches forward you will not be the same person five years from now that you are today you won't it just won't happen and a lot of things in your life are going to happen hey i don't want to get dark on it but people are going to die relationships are going to fail and crumble you might break up with somebody 
you know your dog might not be here anymore because they don't have a full lifespan like you do like change is inevitable it's always happening it's always going to happen you might get fired from a job but then guess what you might get a better job because you got fired from that job that's the thing about life like change is absolutely inevitable so don't get too attached to your false comforts in this life because that's exactly what they are they're false they're not real they won't be there for you forever they don't have your back the cold harsh reality of life is that life will hit you in the fucking chest with some adversity and change and you have to adapt you have to get resourceful and you will grow and learn from it though and it's not a bad thing it's a good thing it's it's helping you to level up that's the point of change is to level up so i will end that one here today i hope you were able to take something from this and maybe have a shifted perspective relative to change and uh, know that maybe when change occurs look at it like okay this can probably bear better fruits down the pipe at first it's gonna suck you're gonna say I don't like this but if you give it time and you face up to it chances are it's going to bear better fruit so till the next one you know what to do eat good live well stay true